Hello world, and welcome back to DxO. My name is Don, and today I'm going to process uh, another image with DxO Photolab 5. And this one is actually on the back of a request I had in the comments, which was to um, show how I might go about doing quite a high contrast black and white image. Um, so I've been pondering for the last little while which image to use um, because, you know, it feels to me like, you know, not every image can handle sort of a high contrast um, black and white look. So I thought about um, an image that I took, maybe I want to say maybe nearly a year ago, maybe last August or something. Um, I, uh, I got a new, um, a new lens and, and on the day it arrived, I just went out for a little walkabout, um, and, and I took this shot. And, um, when I was processing it originally, I processed it as a reasonably high contrast, um, black and white image. So I thought, Hey, that should, that should work out well. So let's jump in and I'll show you how I might, um, go about this. All right. So here we go. And this, um, you know, for transparency, this is the next day. Um, I, I had to go at this image yesterday and, um, yeah, I was just doing it on the fly and I have to admit the sky defeated me. It took me, took me some thought process to think how to uh, do what I wanted with the sky. Um, but I think I'm there now. So let me show you what we have. So this image that's up here on the screen is the, the base image. I think it's fully reset. So it's got a little smart lighting on it. Um, by default, but other than that, it's it's fully reset. Um, and so this, when I originally took this image, uh, this, I know, click, there we go. This is how I processed it roughly. I, I actually, I did a print of it and I took it over to Photoshop and I did increase the contrast a bit more in Photoshop um, with some, with some, um, you know, some different uh, local adjustments and just sort of brushing them in where I wanted them. But I, I reckon I can get there. Um, and, and I wouldn't have gone nearly this contrasty as I'm about to do um, in my own. It was quite contrasty for me, but but I'm going to, going to take it even further. Um, and, and as a baseline, um, so what I did was I took, I took the image um, over to Silver FX um, and the only thing I had done to the image before I sent it over, and in fact, you can you can see that the lens profile obviously was not applied, but that's fine. I'm not worried. Um, as I, I raised the exposure in this bottom area a little bit, I think I maybe raised the shadows and midtones um, to to bring that up a bit further than it is in that color image that I've just showed you. And then I sent it to Silver FX, um, and I just took a preset, and I'm sorry, I don't remember which one, um, but it was just one that gave me a contrasty image that I was pleased with, that I thought it looked nice, um, and something to sort of work to try to recreate. So after quite a bit of, um, <laughs> quite a bit of experimentation. This is where I've gone. And, and I've actually left this a uh, bit darker in the bottom than what the silver effects um, version is just because I, I kind of prefer it that way. Um, but let me show you how I, how I got here only using DxO um, and in fact not even using any of the film simulations. Just uh, I tried to do this as straight up as I could. Um, so let's let's have a look, see what you think. So I'll start out on this one. This one is reset. And I have made myself some notes for this one because there's quite a bit of um, quite a bit of um, stuff to this. So let's come over here to color. Um, and one of the first things I'm going to do is actually um, drop this down to uh, neutral color realistic ton tonality. Um, which is going to make it very, very flat, but that's okay. We will leave it that way. Um, and then we can, we can put on, this is how I'm turning it to black and white. I'm just putting on the toning black and white. Um, still very, very flat. So let's, let's see what we can do about this. So I'm looking at the, um, I'm looking at the histogram and the histogram is quite to the left and it feels as though um, we can bring that up. So I'm maybe just give that 20 points just on its own to get that a little closer to 
a central starting point and then smart lighting I'm going to actually use spot weighted and I'll just put a wee spot point sort of on here so that'll tweak things a little bit so that's all good now the next thing I'm going to do to this because actually let me get rid of the let me get rid of the things down here and get this a bit bigger and can get rid of the things over here Um, I'm just wondering, what do I have open? Oh, it's still the spot weighted thing, right? Cool. I just could see the, the dotted line around it. Um, right, so here we are. So I want to apply a um, curve to this to try to bring some of the contrast back. And I'm going to go with a pretty aggressive curve, um, which is going to darken up that bottom quite a bit. But it's this is largely about trying to get those clouds into the right place. Um, or at least you know the beginnings of the right place. So I'll just pop that on um, as a starting point. So and I'm going to now just take that down to forty maybe, just so it's not quite so up on the edges. Um, Right, so yeah, I think it's, it's it's a pretty good start for those clouds, I reckon. So let's um, let's move on from there and see what we do. So over here, I know um, you know one of the things in black and white that you do sometimes is uh, is down in the channel mixer, but there's not a lot not a lot to it given this technique. But I can get a bit. You can see the blue um, does a bit here, so. I'm actually I'll drop that a bit, but not not a heap. Um, just thinking about so we did that. Oh yeah, and another interesting one. Um, let's. Uh, this is a black and white image, but let's. Does the saturation actually does change the tones just a little bit there? Um, and I found just through experimentation that um, ultimately lowering my saturation. Um, was a uh, was a good thing. I guess it's going to impact how the how the split toning applies its black and white filter. So I guess it makes sense, but um, it felt a little counterintuitive to start with. Nice. So we do that one. Um, color rendering. Yeah, I've done. Cool. So that's all for there. So let's let's now sort of um, continue this in local adjustments um, to get where we're going. So a few things we're going to want. We're going to want a um, control line, kind of coming up at this angle, maybe to about there. Grab that picker, bring that picker sort of down here, I'd say. Um, and so some of the things we'll do in here, we're going to, of course, raise the exposure of this bottom bit. Um, quite a bit maybe around there um, and I'm going to add a bit of micro contrast not too much at this point because this moss will get pretty chunky pretty quick um, clear view so I'm gonna do a bit of that in there as well and then I'm just going to have a run through highlights, mids, um, shadows, and and blacks just to to give it a little tweak. Um, so maybe bring that up a bit, bring that up a bit more. I'm just curious. I'm going to bring those highlights down a bit. No, I do like them. I do like them up a bit more. Maybe about there. Going to raise those shadows a bit, and I'm going to bring my blacks, so just to keep things nice and black. 
Just look in there. So the actual, if I'm on it, the actual paint is about 10, 12, which is, is plenty black for me. I don't need that at zero. Um, nice. So that's, let's have a, have a compare here. So that's lifted that all up quite a bit. Notice that this is probably coming up a bit more than I want. So I'm going to just grab a control point and do a negative um, control point on here. Well, I'm just going to play with that a little. Hmm. I'm actually going to. It's looking a little funny on this section here, so. I might just I might do that with a brush after the fact actually. I'll just leave that for now. That is all good. Okay, so um, another thing that I'm going to do down here, just while I'm down here, is um, going to bring those letters up a little bit more, um, and I'll just use a just use a brush for that. I think I'll get away with this because um, I'm, I'm mostly just going to see what that does. Yeah, pretty good. Some of that might be in the mid-tones too. Yeah, I'm getting into quite a bit more. I'll be careful with that because the getting into the concrete a bit more. But that's a good start. I've got one more step that I'll take on that um, lettering momentarily, but for now, I will leave that and let's have a quick peek at the sky. Um, so if I just right click, do plus, I'm just going to grab a graduated filter. Um, and I'm going to go sort of like that. Um, and I'm just going to add. Um, Add some clear view to it. Part of the reason that I use the graduated filter, so it doesn't really affect the buildings too much, there you see. Part of the reason I use the graduated filter rather than another means um, is to try and keep these. Um, I had applied something more broadly across, and these clouds um, got quite a bit of texture in them. And the one that I sent to um, silver effects didn't have that texture and as I was comparing them side by side I actually liked the fact that they were a little bit subtler a little bit softer so I've just gone with a graduated filter like I said it doesn't um, doesn't really impact my buildings at all but it does help to um, give that shape to those clouds there nice cool so like I said I, I have one other thing that I want to do with the lettering down here I'm going to leave that for now and we'll I think that's probably pretty close to um, ready to do our side by side. Um, and the thing for the lettering is going to go plus and grab a control point. I'm just going to get zoomed right into one to one. And I'm going to literally put a control point on there. There we go. I was hoping that would redraw. Um, and uh, let's just what's our impact there? Nice. Just mousing over to see two twenty one, two thirty five. Yeah, that'll do. Uh, so I'll put another one here. There we go. Let me just extend that out a bit. Um, just shift that down. Looks like another one here is going to be the thing. Another one here ish. And another one here ish. The little computer slowing down a bit there. <laughs> Not
Nice. Cool. So, if I close that. To turn off the lettering, so that's that's the lettering. So it makes a pretty pretty substantial difference in how it stands out. Um, nice. So let's back this up. Have a look. Awesome. I'm going to compare it to um, the one that I was trying to recreate and see if there's anything. Uh, like I said, I did take some notes, so I don't think I've forgotten anything. But let's have a peek. So let's see. Oh, some slight, some sli slight differences, but I think, I think for um, for the sake of what we're doing here, well, those clouds are looking a bit different. Let me see, have I forgot something? So I did the exposure, the tone curve. Might be in the tone curve actually. I might have had a slight um, difference in how I did the tone curve. Let me just have a wee play with the tone curve um, and see if I can get that sky closer. Yeah, that'll be it, eh? That'll be it. Not taking it too far. So, you know, it's somewhere it's somewhere in there. Um, just to find the right, to spend some time and find the right um, mix of things. And obviously, um, there's a little bit more detail coming out here, so I'm guessing that um, somewhere along here, um, in one of my local adjustments, uh, probably this one, I had maybe raised the shadows um, even more. Oh, sorry, that was mid-tones. Might have raised those more too. So. Yeah, some, something, yeah, there we go. I've got a bit of a lag here, so it's... Um, Now I've taken them brighter. That's fine. You get you get the idea. So playing with it, um, seasoning to taste. So Just a little interjection, a little quick update. Um, I forgot to come back to um, this area over here, uh, and, and as I was looking at that, it was really gone wonky in terms of, you know, just the. <laughs> it was being basically pushed too far. Um, so what I've done is. Um, I've just gone to um, the, just a moment now, let me just turn this one off here. Um, so I came to this one and I just readjusted it, um, both in terms of where the uh, eyedropper was sitting and also its overall positioning, um, such that it was fading out and not impacting this area over here too much. Um, and, and then once I had done that adjustment, then I just came in and, and dropped, uh, I just did did it cheap and dirty, to be honest, um, dropped a series of um, control points in there, got them more or less placed, and you can see here that I um, I gave them a little bit of clear view, and I lifted up the mid-tone shadows and, and even the blacks um, a little, just to try to make that area match. So, yeah, and, and you can see now. Wait, now I'll come out of the come out of the local adjustments. You can see now that this this looks so much better. Um, if you go back, I I've don't have that copy anymore because I got um, I've I've updated it. But uh, if you go back just before this interjection and you look, it was it was really kind of weird um, if you looked at it closely. So so here we go. Here's my image, and I forgot in the end to compare it. So um, this is the one that was out of um, Silver Effects. So and again, this one is brighter at the bottom, but I just I actually prefer it a little bit darker at the bottom. So I went a different way, but I did pretty well with that sky. I did I did better on this version with that sky. If you look at the sky of my test um, one and and the silver effects one, I, I nailed it pretty tightly. Um, and that, that is entirely down to just spending some time with that tone curve. 
um, and just finding just the right mix that was that was the solution to the sky because it was the sky yesterday when I first tried um, that really hung me up. It's like recreating that sky was 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 a tricky one. So so hopefully that's been helpful. That's my take on doing a high contrast black and white in DxO Photo Lab Five. Thanks for watching and hope to hope to see you again. Cheers. Bye bye.